my father was born in, in the Nags Head and my mother was um, evacuated to Monmouth during the war. She went to the girls' school and the girls' school and the boys' school weren't allowed to mix. So they used to rendezvous at the Kimmin. Um, so the Naval Temple was quite warm and comfortable in the little bits that you could go and sit in. So I'm led to believe, which may be the only reason I'm here, is because the Naval Temple was on top of the Kimmy <laughs> for, for my parents to court. The Naval Temple was built to celebrate the victories in the Napoleonic Wars of the 16 admirals, uh, which are on the roundels around the, the frieze of the, of, of the temple. The Naval Temple, when it was built in 1801, um, would have been visible to the ex-seamen who were fighting or had been fighting in the Napoleonic Wars in the late part of the 18th century, who, who had retired to ply their trade on the river, entertaining gentlefolk by taking them down the river from Simmons Yet to Redbrook or whatever, and uh, could look up to the Naval Temple celebrating some of their deeds of daring do. Why are there different color circles on the Naval Temple? Why are some white and why are some blue and why are some red? There were three fleets and there was an Admiral of the Red, an Admiral of the Blue and an Admiral of the White. And we still have those. The Royal Navy has a white ensign and the Fleet Auxiliary and Customs have blue ensigns. And all our merchant ships, which are flagged in the UK, have a red ensign. If you want to sort of tie in the Nelson end of it, there's all sorts of uh, lovely urban myths about him courting in the Hamilton and chasing around the Round Tower. It, it is separate from the Round House, but yes, you could, mm. they see each other, they watch over each other. Um, uh, there, there is a, a, a connection both yeah. geographically and chronologically. It is only these trees behind us that stop this being a fantastic view down to the river. And, and I suspect that on either side of you would have been the two long barrel four pounders, which were used to fire salutes and celebrations out over the river. Um, we can see the uh, names of various admirals on the plaques. There are actually 16 admirals commemorated on the Naval Temple. The dates relate to different battles or naval engagements involving either the French, Spanish or the Dutch. Some of them are very major battles, for instance Nelson's on the other side. It's very much a sign of, of, of British attitude in the late 18th century. Uh, and if you look up to the flags above me, you can see the Union Jack uh, standing proud above the French, Spanish and Dutch flags. If we look at the Union flag, is it hasn't yet got the Irish cross in it. Um, but the Naval Temple was actually completed the same year that I, um, Ireland came into the Union, so had it been just a tiny bit later it would have had it. It would have been one of the last examples of the old Union flag. One interesting thing is just how incredibly popular Nelson was. I mean, it attracted huge crowds. And, uh, you know, wherever he went. And as part of that visit, he came here, he dined in the Roundhouse, he was with Emma Hamilton, probably the most famous love affair in British history. Um, and of course, he inspected the Naval Temple as part of that and wrote some very, very positive things about it. He said it was the only thing of its kind as a monument to the Royal Navy um, and, and how grateful he was. Um, and he also commented on the Kim in generally and the location and the views here and said it was one of the most beautiful places he'd ever visited. Um, now as part of the project when we restored the Naval Temple, part one of that was um, commissioning a new Britannia. Um, the original one had disappeared a long, long time ago and for some time since the early 70s there had been a fibreglass one up there. So we decided as part of that to commission Philip Chatfield, who's a sculptor and naval um, historian, to do a Britannia from scratch and out of stone. And Philip, who is quite expert in these matters, is fairly sure that the original statue here was the first statue of Britannia holding a trident. And the trident, of course, is associated with Neptune and is all about Britain ruling the waves. She was already on coinage by that time with the trident, but generally before that period she was usually shown holding a spear. 
um, because the symbolism of Britannia goes all the way back to Boudicca. It's associated as, with that as, as a representation of obviously British strength and British independence and so on. It's one connection with the Navy that this local area has. Um, it took tens of thousands of oak trees to build a ship like the Victory, so you can imagine the amount of deforestation that was causing at the time. But it also needed a lot of long-term management because it took 200 years to mature an oak so it was suitable for shipbuilding. They didn't know steel ships were going to come in a generation or so later or so. And he actually wrote quite a scathing report that the forest wasn't being carefully managed enough. And he talked about things like um, pigs being allowed to graze too freely of acorns, which is quite ironic now that we have the wild boar population as well, of course. <laughs> there was a lot of fear of being invaded. And I know some of the imagery can all seem a bit jingoistic, particularly you know, when we look at it with modern sensibilities. But I like to think of things like this as kind of monuments to peace and stability and a reminder of what can go wrong if we don't work together.